I once heard a story about this tightrope walker that used to walk across above Niagara Falls and he would be able to do all kinds of things up there including going back and forth with a wheelbarrow and at one point he came to the crowd that was watching him and he said do you trust that I could go across this tightrope above Niagara Falls with some person inside this wheelbarrow and everybody said yeah yeah no problem everybody thought that he could do it. And so then he said, okay, who's willing to get in the wheelbarrow? Now, trust is one of the hardest things for us to actually do. Now, some people are more naturally trusting than others, but for most of us, once trust is broken, it's very rarely given back. And if it is, it's never to the same extent. Trusting someone with your life, for example, seems to be the extreme case scenario. Although, to be honest, we do it all the time. We see this as a bold act of faith or trust as a patient is wheeled into a surgery and places their lives in the hands of the doctors and nurses around them. And yet, we do it any time we get into a car and hope and trust that the others will stay on the other side of the road or whenever we get into the car with someone else driving. Now, this is not something we think about all that much, but just try teaching someone else to drive and you'll see what I mean about trusting the person behind the wheel. Now, yesterday in church, we talked about how Jesus urges us to trust him, to trust that he won't leave us even when we fail. But what does that trust look like? Well, the root, I guess, faith is ultimately obedience. See, if we trust someone, particularly someone that says they are in authority over us, we're more likely to follow what they say. But does that simply mean accepting whatever happens without having any difficulty uh, with it or to have any discussion about it? Or is there room for wrestling with God while still trusting him? You know, when I was a kid and my mom would ask me if I wanted to do something for her, quite often I would say no. But then I would go and do it anyway because I was being obedient. I didn't really want to do whatever she asked, but I would Anyway, and I would be in a bit of a smart aleck by answering the way that I did, but this is the kind of thing that we normally understand as backtalk or even as disobedient. Yes, it's being cheeky. No, I'm not encouraging you to do so, but it's not the attitude that we link with sinfulness. See, because Jesus doesn't see that kind of argumentation or that kind of honesty as sinfulness. Now, there's a story about him after his authority is challenged in Jerusalem during Holy Week because he cleansed the temple. And then he told this parable. He said, what do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and he said, son, go work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And he answered, I will, sir. But he didn't go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? Jesus asked. The first, they answered. Now the important thing is not what you say, but what you do. Now not in some kind of moralistic, righteous way. This isn't about following some kind of rule book. This is about living your life as if you trust what Jesus has done for you and what God says about you. True trust is not saying that you trust, it's doing something that demonstrates your trust. It's taking that leap and trusting that God will catch you, doing the thing that he's calling you to do, even though it's hard. Trusting that even through death, the Father's purposes will work out. So we can talk about trusting God all we want, but if we never take a step of faith, all that talk doesn't mean very much. You might believe that Jesus can walk across on a tightrope with somebody in the wheelbarrow, but until you get in that wheelbarrow, your trust isn't complete.